Hi everyone. I hope that everyone can see me. I am trying to go live on uh, Ecamm, Crowdcast, and YouTube all at the same time. So hopefully you guys can see and hear me because those are both really important. <laughs> okay. All right. I think everyone can see me. I could be wrong. Um, let's see. All right, so I hope everyone's having a great day. So I know this is midweek. I wanted to do two things. One, I wanted to show you the pattern text, and I also wanted to just test out the new features of YouTube Live, and I wanted to give away the um, the Kate Spade notebook to a lucky winner today, too. So we'll do that at the end. Um, I have some notes so I don't forget, because I don't want to forget to give away to the winner. All right, so I'm going to share my screen Hopefully you can see it. Um, you might see a picture in picture. All right, so I have InDesign open. Now, I today have put all of the slides into InDesign. So if you remember my past YouTube video and I told you how you can use InDesign just like PowerPoint, uh, this is it. All you have to do, it's super easy, is open up your file and then hit Shift and W, and now you have full screen. So today we are just doing a lunch and learn. Now lunch and learns, I just wanna explain, are a little different than doing the webinars because the webinars are going to be, they kind of disappear, whereas the lunch and learns will stay up here forever. So here's the agenda for today. We'll talk really quickly about me in case you're new here and you've never met me and you want to know who I am. We'll talk about Instagram, why I think it's important and something you might want to look into. We'll talk about some quotes and the examples that I've seen that have been working. And then we'll go right into the tutorial. I'll show you how to do the pattern text. That's why it's a lunch and it's really quick. Today won't even be 30 minutes. And then I'll talk to you about some of my favorite Instagram scheduling tools as well as some fonts you can use in your Instagram description to make it a little more interesting than everybody else's. And we'll talk about Linktree, which I love, as well as how to find the replay for today and the downloads and the templates. Okay, so because I am using Ecamm Live, I have to tell you that um, I cannot see your questions um, only because I am new to using Ecamm Live. This is only my second time. So if you have questions, I will get to them afterwards. So um, right after this, the tutorial, I'll check again. But just a quick hello, I'm Lisa, and I have zero background in graphic design. I know, are you are you excited that you're here with someone who has not, knows nothing about graphic design? Uh, but my point isn't that I know nothing. My point is I have a whole different life and I'm 43 years old and I woke up one day and I decided I really just wanted to learn InDesign and graphic design, so I just taught myself. So I just want anyone who is feeling overwhelmed by learning any new software, technology, um, maybe going into a new business or a new phase in your life, you know, never be afraid. Like you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. So that's really my only point with all of this. Uh, I used to do human resources and now I write romance. I write fitness books. You know, I basically just do things that make me happy. Uh, and I also do calligraphy and I offer this every time. I love doing calligraphy. I don't even charge for it. If someone is interested and wants to learn more about calligraphy, let me know. Um, in fact, I have a special offer coming up next week on a calligraphy training course. It's not mine, it's one of my friends um, and she does really great hand lettering. So that is coming up next week. All right. So Instagram, who's on Instagram? Who's using it? What's going on there? So Instagram, if you didn't know this and I didn't because honestly when it first came out, I didn't really like Instagram and I kind of ignored it and didn't pay any attention to it but it has 600 million unique monthly users. So that's a lot of people. You know, we're always talking about how can we reach new audiences and get our products or books or whatever into their hands and get them to know about us. Instagram is perfect. 
people love it. Now, which people is that? It's mostly women, uh, and it's mostly a younger demographic. So that's not to say it's everybody, uh, but right now that's what the stats are telling us. Now, it's not as young of a demographic as Snapchat, but it's still younger. So if your target audience, say, is in their 60s or 70s, I mean, I don't know what your products are. Maybe you do a menopause product or something. It's not likely. Um, there might be people on there, but the likelihood of you finding people will be much lower on Instagram. That's all the demographics are telling you uh, than, say, maybe Facebook, which does have an older demographic. So it's really good, though, because people follow brands. So the point is people like having, um, you know, a stream of information from brands. So that's why we're talking about that today. Now, what are examples that I've seen? So the whole reason we're talking about this today is because I saw a big jump in my Instagram when I started using quotes. And I didn't use quotes or word art forever because it seemed a little cheesy. And I don't know about you guys, but when I took all of the Instagram courses, I was learning from people to use word swag or fonto, I think it was called, or photo. And it looked cute, but it also looked just like everybody else's, which is always my biggest pet peeve with um, Pick Monkey or anything else. So let me just show you some quick examples, if you can hopefully see this. So what I started doing is I would do what I call the three, the two, one. So I'd have two quotes on the outside, one quote in the middle. And then what I would try to do is I would try to get the pictures that are in that same row to match. Now, Instagram is always in rows of three. Obviously, people on their phone just see one big stream, but when they open it up on their desktop, they're going to see the three together. So all of these were created with Adobe InDesign, and I will show you how to do that today. There's another, I have another profile. Um, so you don't have to do just simple words like that. You could also do larger quotes, right? So over here, I did bigger quotes over here. Um, but again, they all kind of followed that same look and feel. So you have two pinks on the outside, a picture, two clears on the outside, a pink on the inside. So when you think about doing your Instagram feed, try to think of it that way. It's going to just make it look so much nicer and a little bit more cohesive. Um, so let's jump back. Okay. So before we start and in, jump into the tutorial, because it is going to be very quick, there's a couple prerequisites that you need to have that are going to make it so much faster. First, you need Adobe InDesign, which I feel like goes without saying, right? You're going, today is going to be taught in Adobe InDesign. Now, if you've never used it, I do have a free five day how to get up and running with InDesign. It's like a quick and dirty. It's not going to teach you everything and anything. Um, but if you want, InDesign also has free tutorials built in there. They also offer, I believe they still offer a seven day or 30 day trial of Adobe InDesign in case you're not sure if it's for you or something you're interested in. Um, the second thing you want to do is make sure you have patterns and pictures chosen ahead of time. So typically these are JPEGs. You could do PNG files or GIFs. Um, honestly, I haven't tried that. Everything I have is a JPEG or a PNG. But when you think about patterns and you think about letters, if you have very tiny, tiny, uh, like small details, it looks really great inside word art. But if you have a big picture of a face or something and you just have a couple snippets of words, it might not look so great unless you have a big quote where you're going to see much more of the picture. So just keep that in mind when you are choosing pictures as well as, um, we'll go into this later, but Instagram is a square. So typically it's 1080 by 1080 pixels across and down. And if you can get a picture that's very high resolution, it's just going to help because if you think about it, as soon as you take that picture, you shrink it into word art so you can only see a small part of it. And then you shrink that on somebody's phone, it's going to be so, so small. So the higher resolution, usually 300 is the best. Um, so, you know, Whatever you're downloading from, let's say you're getting your stock from Adobe or from a deposit photo, sometimes they'll give you an option to download a high or a low resolution. Always download the high resolution. You're just going to be better off that way. And the same thing with words. Like I said, you know, the words that I had before you saw on Lisa Seifert, 
those were really long quotes um, with sort of textured backgrounds. But when I do word art, I just try to pick one word or a phrase because it's just going to show and pop inside the word that much better. So, you know, maybe just brainstorm a whole month of words that you want to use for the month, like your theme. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe if you are a weight loss Instagram business um, or business on Instagram, you just have all positive words about, you know, gluten free or low fat or um, I don't know. I don't find those words motivating. <laughs> I like ice cream, but you know what I mean? Just try to find things all within the same theme and it's just going to look much nicer in your feed. All right. The uh, second thing, and I, this probably goes without saying all the time, you know, have your color scheme ready to go. Know if you're using pastels or dark colors, light colors. Um, and like I said, try to match it in that row so it looks like it's meant to be together. And then also with your fonts, try to limit yourself to just two fonts. It's just going to going to look so much nicer. And when you have too many fonts, it almost looks like it's an accident versus something that you tried to do on purpose. All right. So let's go ahead and switch over to our file. So here's a couple that I just made for you really quick. Um, and that's kind of what it looks like. So this is mixing two fonts. So let's go ahead, if you are inside InDesign, all you're going to do is go to File, New, and you're going to say Document. Now inside here, um, you're going to have Units, and I want you to go ahead and select Pixels. And over here for Width and Height, just like I said, it's 1080 by 1080. So scroll down to the bottom. And now here's what's a little different. In your margins, typically we always have margins, right? Because we're printing this out or someone might use it somewhere. You don't need any margins on this. So make sure to zero out all of your margins, top, by bottom, left, right, all zero. And then go ahead and say create. All right, once you're in here, remember I told you there are tutorials inside InDesign, so they wanna, they wanna help you. Uh, go ahead and close that out because we don't need that. You have me. Uh, so let's go ahead and make something. So we're going to go ahead and select the T for type tool. And like I always say, just eyeball it. You know, it's not a print for magazine. This isn't professional work. We're just making some pretty word art. So let's go ahead, eyeball the top half. We'll have two words. And let's go ahead and just do pretty um, as one word. I'll just do pretty fabulous. Now, that is really tiny. So I know that my font is Dido. And I know for this, I need to make it about 200. Now, I want to center it. And I also, inside my text box, if I switch over to the selection tool, I'm going to select a line center. So it's right in the center of that. Now. Right now, I can't really do anything with it. So I can change the text. So at this point, it's really, really important. If you don't want it, the word to be pretty or you want it to be um, beautiful or gorgeous, this is the time to change it because once we make our next move, you cannot change the text. I repeat, you cannot change the text after we move on to the next step. So the next step is simply to make sure that this is selected and go over here to the type tool and you're going to go ahead and select Create Outlines. Now, this text has now changed. So if I do this bottom selection here, you can see it has all these little dots. So I can no longer select the text tool, like I said, and change the letters because it's no longer text. It's now an object. And that's OK. So that is how we're going to layer a pattern onto there. So go ahead, unselect this by going to the Selection tool and just clicking anywhere outside of here. If you watch the older tutorials on YouTube, even from a year ago, they are wrong. So they'll tell you to make a, uh, I think it's called a compound uh, text or something or how to do multiple texts. You don't have to do that anymore with the new 2018 version. So with the new version, what you want to do is you want to go to file and you're going to go to place. Now remember I talked before and I said, make sure you have some patterns picked out. So I have some patterns in here that I kind of like. Um, I don't know if you can see them. Uh, so I kind of like this rose glory. It's pretty, it's pink, it's glittery. And so I'm going to say open. Now I have that loaded cursor like I normally do inside of Adobe InDesign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover up the word pretty with my 
block of texture or my image. That's all I need to do. Now, don't freak out. <laughs> I know it's not doing anything. The reason you're doing that is to make sure that when you go to paste that document, place that um, texture or that photo on top of your text, you need to make sure it fits. And so that's a big problem I had with some of the older tutorials. They just tell you to sort of place it in there. And sometimes whatever the size or the dimensions are, you know, you can't, it's probably not going to fit. Nine times out of 10, it never fit. It was really annoying. So what you're going to do is now I know it's all covered up. I can see that I can't see the word pretty, so it's perfect. So I want to make sure I have the selection tool still selected. And I'm going to go over to my keyboard and I'm just going to control X that image. So I cut it, but it's still there in the memory and I'm going to paste it. But the way I'm going to paste it, let me make sure, I, let me make sure I'm telling you this right, is I'm going to do paste into. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to first select my uh, my object, the text object that I just created, right? So it has all those little dots. So I have the selection tool under here, the direct one, not this first one, but the second one. And, I make sh and I'm going to make sure I have the text selected. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go paste into. And now it's pasted into that object. So let me exit out of here. So now I have pretty with that sparkle pink that I had chosen from before. So let's go ahead and do this for the word fabulous. Let's do it one more time. So we're going to select the type tool. And again, I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm going to put it underneath and I'm going to do fabulous. And again, uh, Minion Pro is not my font. I'm going to use Northwell and I'm going to use a size of 400. And I just know this from trial and error. Clearly it's too big. So my trial and error isn't working. So let's do 350. There we go. And same thing as before, I'm going to center this and I'm going to go to the selection tool and then I'm going to hit align center. So now it's aligned within that box. So if I wanted to, to line these two up, I could select this box and this box. Whoops. And I could just align these over here at the center. It's like off a smidge. All right. So all we want to do then is the same steps. Do you remember what those are? All we're going to do is go over here to type and we're going to go to create outlines. So now I can't edit that anymore because now it's an object, it's not text. I'm positive that's the text that I want. And then I'm going to unselect it, just be sort of like nowhere on this document. And I'm going to do file place and I'm going to pick out a texture. So let's say we want to try a different texture. Um, maybe I want to try this top and it might be too light, but let's try it out. So I'll say open. I have that loaded cursor again. And again, same thing as before. I want to make sure I cover up the entire word of fabulous. So it's all covered up. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit control X. So now it's disappeared. Don't worry, it's still in memory. And then I'm going to go over to the selection tool. Remember the direct selection, the one underneath. And I'm going to select that object again. You can see all the little blue dots. And I'm going to go to edit and paste into. There we go. So now it is gold. Now I was worried, uh, so I'll give you one little pro tip uh, on this. Because it was so light, I'm worried it might not show up too well on Instagram. So sometimes what I do is I'll draw another text box and I'll just repeat that word again, fabulous. And I'll do the same font and I will do the same size. I think it was 350 and I will center this. Now this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this text and I'm going to put it on top, but then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go arrange and send to back. And so I'm going to just offset it a little bit so that I can kind of see it peeking through if my spinning beach ball of death goes away. So now I have, have a little bit of a shadow. There we go. And that kind of gives you one, a shadow and helps if you have a little bit of a darker color. You know, I think I used it, I'll show you on, um, there was something I used it on. It was the blue. So you can see the blue didn't show up too well. So I had tried to outline it 
with a little bit of black underneath. So that is all there is to that. Now, if you, now how do I get it onto Instagram, right? So once you've created your file, you can go to file and you can go to export and you're simply going to make sure you export it as a JPEG and we'll just call it word art example and save it. And you could choose quality. I usually do max because um, there's really not an issue. Instagram is going to just rechange the sizing just like Facebook does for how much data you have. And that's it. So when I go back over to my, let's go back to my desktop. When I go back to my desktop, I am going to see my word art example. And there we go. So that is all you need to do. It's really just that easy. So let's go back really quick. I wanted to share with you some of my Instagram tools that I like, um, as well as show you how to get today's templates and slides. So everybody, I think everybody knows this. You can now schedule directly to Instagram, which I know was a huge issue before and like, I thought it was painful. Like you'd schedule it in the tool and then you get a prompt on your phone and then you'd have to post it on your, uh, like manually on your phone. But now you don't have to, you can just set it and forget it. But only if you have a business account on Instagram. Now, if you don't have a business account and you're not sure, um, I just left a link here, Rebrandly Instagram Business, IG Business. Just go there. That'll take you directly to the Facebook help page, directly dealing with how to convert your Instagram personal into a business account. Um, the second one is now I use eClincher. That's my favorite app. And I'll show you that in a second, uh, for scheduling, but Tailwind, Buffer, Iconosquare, Oracle, so like all of pretty much everybody who has scheduling right now has applied to be a partner with Instagram so that they can post directly. Now, keep in mind, you can still post to Instagram with your personal account, but you'll have to do it the old fashioned way where you schedule it inside the tool, but then on your phone, you just have to, it'll prompt you for, uh, for you to post it. So that's something to think about. The other thing really cool that I found out recently was description fonts. So let me show you exactly what description fonts are. So when you go up to mine, you can see that I have your InDesign BFF in a new kind of cool font that helps it stand out from the rest of the description. So how did I get that? Um, there's two different sites, fonts for Instagram, I left you those links, and also cool fancy text generator. And basically you just put in whatever you want, you hit copy, and when you paste that into your uh, Instagram profile, so if I go here and click edit profile, and I paste it into here, then it's going to show up uh, over there when you go ahead and save your profile. So that's kind of cool. Um, what else did I want to share with you? Oh, uh, eClincher. So what I really like about eClincher is I can do, so here's my Instagram, but more importantly, if you've never used eClincher, what I like about it, which is different than everything else, is it consolidates all of the responses that you've received from every single social media platform that eClincher has, whether that's LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, I don't have to go to all of them. I can just respond directly to people right from this app. Um, so that's something I really like about eClincher. All right. And here were the directions for Facebook on converting your profile. All right. Last thing is Linktree. And I think everybody, I feel like everyone uses Linktree now, but Linktree, when I click this, because remember you only get one link for Instagram. So this sort of expands it when someone clicks and then you can give people multiple links. Now you have unlimited links. Linktree is free. Uh, however, if you pay for it, so all I did was I paid for it. So now mine are circles instead of rectangles. Probably nobody notices but me. Um, and then I was able to stick social media here down at the bottom. So again, you could save yourself the $6 and not worry about circles versus squares. Um, but that's something that I just chose to do. All right. What else did I want to share with you? Um, oh, how to find the replay. So today's replay is different. Like I said, from webinars, you can, this will be up on YouTube live. I won't be deleting it or taking it off. You don't have to pay for it because it's a quick lunch and learn. Um, I would have done this as a YouTube video anyway. Um, and 
Okay, I just checked. There are no questions. Someone, Carol, Coral said hi. Hi, Coral. Elizabeth said you can see and hear me. Thank you. Corey said Crowdcast is great. Thanks. And Elizabeth said hi. So, okay, so I think we're good. No comments. Uh, but if you want to get this, you or you want to know about upcoming webinars that I have, if you follow me on Crowdcast, and I guess Lisa Seifert wasn't available. I'm Lisa Ellen Seifert on Crowdcast. Uh, you can see everything I have planned, whether it's for Pretty Fabulous or it's for authors and social media. And then if you subscribe to me on YouTube, you should get prompts too when this goes live. So it does get cast to both. Um, and then slides. You can download these slides that I use today, but not right now. I have to wait till YouTube Live generates a link. So I will post a blog post for today, probably within a couple hours, and you will have an opportunity to, to download the slides from today, as well as the templates that we created. So I will show you, I'll save you the gratitude template. Um, I know we didn't do that together, but I showed that to you. InDesign rocks with this little uh, sort of rainbow, and also the pretty fabulous. So you can have all of those for free um, if you just go to the blog post, but not right now, in a couple hours. <laughs> and then I hope to see all of you back again on April 3rd, which is not next week, but the week after, uh, only because April 1st is Sunday and that's Easter, so we won't be doing our webinar, monthly webinar on Sunday. Uh, so we'll do it on Tuesday and we'll go over workbooks and how to create those fill in the blank workbooks and a little bit more about sort of what makes a good workbook versus a bad workbook and how to put those together. So that will be a one hour uh, webinar with a few more slides. All right, I hope this was helpful and I'm so excited to see your Instagram post. So if you do some word art, make sure to tag me and I can follow you back. And I hope everyone is having a great week. All right, bye. Oh, Elizabeth, where can I find you on Crowdcast? So you can find me on Crowdcast at that link, Lisa Ellen Seifert.